Okay, hello. Um, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Susan Kruger, who is the uh, founder of StudySkills.com, which uh, and is the author of a book called Soar Study Skills, which is a curriculum uh, of simple of a simple set of skills to help students organize and study efficiently. Uh, Susan lives in Detroit, or in the Detroit area, and she's been taking Skype sessions in the Alexander Technique uh, with me for the past few months, and we're going to talk today a little about her experiences with that process. Susan, welcome to the show. Hi, Robert. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for, for doing this. It's, it's weird uh, talking to you without the camera. But, it is, yes. <laughs> Uh, so before we begin, uh, if someone were to uh, corner you in an elevator or at a dinner party or something, you just had a 20 seconds or so to answer their question, what is this Alexander tech thing, te technique thing that you're, you're doing, what would your answer be? Yeah, I had to think about this a little bit, but I th ultimately I think it's about discovering how your body is naturally designed to move and function. And that's yeah. as, mm -hmm. as simple as it gets. <laughs> that, that's, that's excellent. And what is it that uh, brought you to the point of um, arranging Skype sessions? Well, it was a combination of factors, but um, Jeremy Chance is a friend of mine through an entrepreneur group, and he is so passionate about the Alexander Technique and what it can do for people and so and I could really resonate with his passion because I feel just as passionate myself about Montessori education and so um, that's just something that piqued my curiosity and then another mutual friend of ours who I believe you've interviewed before um, yes. Brian, Brian Todd he um, he's had great success with sessions with you and I just knew it was something I needed to check out. So um, that's what prompted me to, to give you a ring and, and start working with you. And did you have specific issues that were of concern to you that you uh, hoped the, the technique would help with? Yeah, I did. I've had recurring neck and shoulder tension for tw more than 20 years, um, pretty severe neck and shoulder tension. And then I've also had... Um, some hip pain that has come and gone over the years, but that's another thing I've been dealing with for the better part of 20 years. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in lupus when I was 19, mm -hmm. and, um, and it was because of several of the symptoms I mentioned and a few other things that led to the diagnosis. So I've always viewed those symptoms as, you know, sort of the aftermath of of um, being rather sick, actually, when I was 19. So, mm -hmm. so you you started Skype sessions. I think it was about two or three months ago. Mm -hmm. um, when did you start to notice any any changes in yourself? You know, the changes came. On one hand, they came so fast. On the other hand, it was so subtle <laughs> that. Right. Um, but it just was a matter of over time realizing, you know, my neck and shoulders don't feel so tight. And um, it, what it is, I think, when you start to to achieve a new sense of normal, you kind of forget how miserable you were. Um, and it, it was very subtle, but it didn't take long before I just started to recognize that I could very easily release the the tension in my neck and shoulders and that's something that I have done. I've done occupational therapy on. I've done physical therapy for. I've done biofeedback. And here, none of that did what just a few freedom uh, freedom techniques have done for me. Or freedom, freedom, freedom directions. Direction. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of people w assume that the... I think the conventional wisdom is that the Alexander technique really needs to be taught in person. The teacher both speaks to the student and uses their hands for for guidance. And obviously, there was no hands-on work 
mm-hmm. with, with what we were doing. Did that seem to you to be a problem in terms of learning ways of changing your own uh, patterns of posture and movement? That did not seem to be a problem. Of course, I have nothing to compare it to, but what I That's what I right, can yeah. compare is that um, that my pain is virtually gone, so it seemed like it was pretty effective without needing to do any hands-on work. Yeah, yeah. And what would you say to people who asked you about this process? I mean, is this something that you would recommend to people, or would you say, well, maybe it would work, it depends a little on your personality, or how, how would you present it to somebody else? Well, I can't imagine anyone not getting something from it. I think it could be beneficial to everyone. And and certainly I understand the passion, as I mentioned, my friend Jeremy at the beginning and, and how his passion is what really piqued my curiosity. I see why, because the implications of, of what the Alexander technique can, can do for people are just uh, overwhelming really in a very positive way. So um, the only thing I see is that you have to believe that it's as simple as it is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the greatest hurdle that um, that people would have to overcome with Alexander Technique is that it is so natural and, and really so simple that the value of it could probably be very easily overlooked. Mm-hmm. And I know I know that we have talked a little about uh, Montessori education. That was something that, as you said, you're you're very passionate about. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you can say about connections between Montessori principles and the Alexander technique that might be helpful for our listeners? Well, sure. And I think Montessori in general is is somewhat misunderstood, at least in the United States. There's a lot of misconceptions. But in the very essence of Montessori education is about essentially trusting the learner, that the child, really at any age, um, they know what they need to learn. And so Montessori is about following their lead and providing experiences to the child at at the time that they're ready and, and interested versus our American approach to education is taking the child and shoving them through a whole bunch of content regardless of what their interests are or their developmental level might be. Um, so the whole the whole approach to Montessori is very natural. It's it's you know let's follow the child because they're the best lead for what the child needs to learn and what they're going to be most successful at learning at this point in time. And that's essentially what Alexander technique is. Is it's about just learning how your body is designed and what you can do. The very simple. Um, things you can do to allow your body to function the way it was designed to function and becoming mm-hmm. aware of the obstacles we put in, in the way. Yeah, and I, I wonder, I'm just th- thinking off the top of my head here, but using an Alexander direction uh, doesn't really, um, um, doesn't specify in detail what's going to happen with the use of that direction. Mm -mm. That's going to be very much dependent on where the student is right at that moment and and so on. So I could see a certain resonance that way as well. Yes, absolutely. And you've, I can't remember how you phrased it, but you said things on several occasions that are really Uh anti-micromanaging. Right. And And that is, that's a premise I really resonate with is because um, the more, the more effective we are at not micromanaging our bodies in the, in the directions we give or, or the little nuances that we stress about, the more we can step away from all that, the more we free ourselves up to, to just function the way we're designed to function. And that's the same thing for education. The more we can remove all of the obstacles and the more we can uh, back away, the adults can back away and let the students be who they were created to be, the more successful they are. You know, the founder of um, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, is a Montessori graduate. The um, founders of Google are both Montessori graduates and they have publicly 
talked about how they credit their success with Google to their preschool education in Montessori. And all of that came from, they had the space to take an idea and explore it and to be comfortable doing that. And, and there's a lot of correlations with Alexander in that. Yeah, and, and how this originally came up is you had found a pamphlet, uh, which was basically a reprint of an uh, ad address to uh, annual meeting of one of the uh, Alexander Technique Societies by a woman named Irene Tasker, who was uh, one of Alexander's first uh, trainees. Uh, he, he, I mean, not formally, it was before he started his training course. Mm -hmm. But she herself was a, um, a Montessori teacher. Yes, I found that pamphlet so fascinating because I believe, she, from what I know, she's one of two people who studied directly under Alexander and also studied directly under Maria Montessori. And another thing I find fascinating about her is that she also spent a lot of time, at least a couple of weeks, traveling with John Dewey. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my mind, Dewey and Montessori are are fundamentally opposed on a on a very major issue, but Nonetheless, those were you know three influential people of her time, and and so she was speaking from a place where she had worked directly with all three of them, and and I just really found that fascinating, and, and what she had to say about that fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, Susan, is is there anything else you would like to add before we come to a close? Well, you know, just a little a little phrase that I used to use when I was in the classroom teaching because you know, a classroom teacher has to make a, a thousand decisions every day and we make them so fast we don't always realize that we're making them but one phrase I heard early on in my teaching career and, and my passion for Montessori has always been there I, I, I went to Montessori school and preschool myself um, but I was teaching public education not in a Montessori setting and someone uh, at a teacher conference used the phrase trust the learner and uh -huh. I found in, in making those hundreds of decisions throughout the day for my students over and over and over again, I kept, I kept coming back to trust the learner. That was the most important directional, you know, guideline I had as far as, you know, how to run my classroom. And I really feel like that applies to Alexander Technique, but it's more of a personal message for each of us. It's just trust yourself. And and be um, open to how simple it can be to readjust a lot of things in your life. And, and you know, get, that relates back to what you said earlier about micromanaging, that micromanaging is kind of the default um, approach to things like, say, posture improvement. You know, exactly. do this, do this, do that, right? A whole right. series of things. and. As you said, uh, Alexander approach is very, very different from that. We really want to get to one thing that will, will cover everything, basically. Exactly, and the simplicity yeah. of it is just, is just amazing to me. It, it makes sense, but it's also, uh, to a certain degree, it's kind of hard to believe too. But, um, but it's yeah. been a fantastic experience for me, and and. Um, yeah, I've really been able to, like I said, I've, I feel like I'm able to uh, let go of the tension that I've never been able to let go of before. And um, just this morning, I woke up with a real sharp pain in my hip, and I tried a couple uh, freedom directions, and, you know, before long, I didn't even notice, but it just faded away. Hasn't been an issue all day. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's a, this is a good point to, to bring our conversation to an end. Uh, my, my guest today is Susan Kruger, who is the, the founder of study, StudySkills.com. We'll, I'll put a link to that by the interview. And she's also the author of SOAR Study Skills and uh, the developer of the SOAR curriculum, which is a s simple set of skills to help students organize and study efficiently, and her work is used in a, quite a few um, educational uh, settings. Um, Susan, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate being here.